Hi sweeties! Welcome back to the channel. Today I am gonna tell you about my experience going to high school in Brazil. I thought that some of you might find it interesting because high school here in Brazil is very different from high school in the US or in the UK. And if you're new here, I am originally from Brazil, but I have been living in the UK for the last nine years. I'm in Brazil right now visiting my mom, <laughs> but I live in London. And I am also married to an American woman, so I go to the US a lot and I have a lot of American friends. And every time me and my friends talk about our high school experiences, <laughs> mine is always quite different. So I hope some of you enjoyed this video, I don't know if this is the kind of content you want to watch here on my channel, but I personally love this kind of video. I love hearing stories about people doing different things in different countries, you know, like studying or working. I just find it very interesting, so I, I hope you do too. <laughs> so, okay, before we start the video, please subscribe and activate the notifications so you know when I post new videos. Also, please follow me on Instagram for amazing photos that are totally gonna change your life. I'm in Brazil right now, so I am posting some really cute stuff. And please give us a thumbs up, because it really helps the channel. I have asked you to tell me everything you want to know about high school in Brazil on Instagram. So I am going to go through the things you asked me and I've also added some things to the list that I thought would be interesting. Okay, so the first question is how long were your days and your classes and at what time did they start and finish? <laughs> that's a very good question because that's something that is completely different in Brazil. And I think that's mostly because of the weather. So, school starts at 7 a.m. in Brazil. Yeah, it's very, very early. Every time I say this to my friends from the UK, they are absolutely shocked. <laughs> I remember when I was going to university in the UK and sometimes our classes would start at 9 a.m. and everybody would be oh no why do we have the 9 a.m. start it's so early and I was like bitch I grew up going to school at 7 a.m. every day <laughs> obviously everything I'm gonna say today is my experience I'm sure there will be people from Brazil watching this that have had very different experiences Brazil is a huge country and every school is a little different so I'm just talking about the schools I've been to. Oh yeah, it's important to mention I've been to three different high schools. <laughs> so usually class starts at 7 or you know around 7 o'clock depending which school you go to sometimes it's like 7 30. My school was 7 a.m. but because it starts so early you also get to leave much earlier so this varies a little bit from high school to high school I think the better fancier ones make it stay there longer but I think most public schools finish at around midday so you get to go home very early and have lunch at home. Amazing. <laughs> I think that's one of the main differences I notice when I talk to people from the US. Because I think having lunch at school in the US is a very big part of your social life and it's like a big thing and at least in the movies right it's like that there are different cliques on, on different tables and everybody's having lunch together and you need to have friends to sit with at lunchtime all that is not usually a thing in Brazil because when it's lunchtime you pack up your stuff and you go home because you were there since 7 a.m. so that was nice I mean I would have absolutely hated hated having to have lunch with people from school every day oh my god uh, Mm -mm. So remember how I said I've been to three different high schools, right? So two of them were like that from 7 to 12. But one of them, because it was a little bit of a nicer high school, they had more classes. So you would have a lunch break and then depending what day it was, you would stay until like 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, having started at 7 a.m. <laughs> that was a lot. However, the lunch situation, even at that school, wasn't anything like it is in America. We didn't have like a big cafeteria with real like proper food. It was more like sandwiches and um, like a slice of pizza. <laughs> You know, there weren't like round tables everywhere where everybody would sit. You would just go to the cafeteria, grab your sandwich or whatever, and then go sit somewhere, you know, on a bench somewhere with your friends. 
or alone if you didn't have any friends. Oh my god, and of course there are some Brazilian snacks at the cafeteria. So we have this thing called coxinha, that is like a chicken thing, like shaped like a teardrop. I can't eat it anymore because I'm a vegetarian, but it was so good. And we had, oh, we had the cheese version of that, which is shaped like this, and that's called risoli. <laughs> we had pão de queijo, which is like a cheesy bread thing that is to die for. Oh my god, and we had gelinho, which is kind of like an ice pop. Is that what it's called? An ice pop? We had that, lots of that, that was very popular. Uh, but people would make fun of you for eating it because of the shape. <laughs> Okay, one of the most asked questions is <laughs> whether I was a popular girl or a loner or a nerd, like what kind of high schooler was I and uh, what the cliques were like and if there were any cliques specific to Brazil. <laughs> so I was definitely not popular. I wasn't a loner either. I had friends, but I think we, we were the nerds probably because yeah, because we were kind of quiet and shy and uh, I was very very awkward. We would get like a little bullied sometimes and we would do well in school, like get good grades and stuff and sometimes popular kids would just talk to us when they wanted to copy our homework, that kind of stuff. So yeah, we were probably the nerds. <laughs> okay, so to explain the cliques in Brazil, I have to get into another question that is what electives are there, you know, like drama, dance, things like sports, things like that. Because I think that's part of what forms the cliques, right? In other countries, I don't know, but that's the impression I get, right? Because there are the cheerleaders and then people who are into sports or drama, whatever. Most schools in Brazil, at least the ones I've been to, don't have a whole lot of electives. Now, I'm speaking about my own experience. I know there are some very fancy private schools that have all sorts of things and it's more American like that but usually you don't even have electives I studied in one school that was a Catholic school that had some electives you could choose if you wanted to do dance or gym class and you could choose between English and Spanish <laughs> I chose dance and Spanish <laughs> But that was the only school, I've been to like a lot of schools and that was the only one that offered any kind of choice. Usually in Brazil you just get like the traditional subjects and you have to take all of them. So, you know, like history, math, geography, chemistry, physics, biology, Portuguese as a first language, English as a second language, oh, gym class, wow. <laughs> I'm probably forgetting something, but those are the ones I remember that were mandatory. Well, they were all mandatory. You know, those were the classes, you just had to take them. And there wasn't anything musical or artistic, which is a shame because I really, really craved that. But yeah, there wasn't anything artistic or any kind of choice, at least from my experience. I know there will be people in the comments saying, no, it was completely different. And there weren't like, I see sometimes there are different levels. Like I think in the US there are different levels of the same class, like more advanced physics or something like that. There, it, That's not the case in Brazil. Everybody, you know, you have your class. Oh yeah, that's another thing. I, I'll, I promise I'll get to the clicks, but I have to explain the whole situation. You don't have different classes with different people. You have one set class that is your gear group that is usually like 30 people and you go to the same classes with all of them. And usually you don't change classrooms depending on which subject. You have a classroom assigned to your gear group and then your teachers come in and teach you. <laughs> obviously. So it's always the same 30 people, same classes. You don't get to choose. You don't get to have different classes with different people. It's, it's always that same group. So because of that, the cliques are not as, as strong, I think, as they are in some other countries, because we're not all doing different things based on our interests. We're all there doing the same thing with the same people every day. <laughs> so there are cliques, but they're just different friendship groups because it's not like people have a whole lot of different interests <laughs> but there are definitely little friend groups that are more popular than others or nerdier than others and then there are people who are loners and don't make any friends that happened to me when i was younger but not in high school luckily i had always like a couple of friends and we were like very quiet and nerdy together <laughs>
Okay, another thing that a lot of people want to know is how my school dealt with the LGBT community, if people could come out, if it was safe, if there were many lesbians in my class. There were a lot of, a lot of questions like that. Okay, so keep in mind that I finished high school 10 years ago. <laughs> oh my god, that's so sad. <laughs> getting so old. <gasps> so it might be different now because things have changed a lot here in Brazil and things are a lot more inclusive and people talk a lot more about LGBT plus rights. But at the time when I was going to high school, it wasn't very progressive. <laughs> Let's just say that. I really hope schools have changed nowadays, but there was absolutely no talk about equality at all, any type of equality. Nobody would speak about racism, nobody would speak about homophobia. I mean, I even remember teachers using like offensive words, you know, when referring to LGBT people. As far as I know, at least, you know, in my schools at that time, there was no counseling or anything like that or any kind of help the school would offer to someone wanting to come out or having any psychological issues. The school wasn't there to help you with your personal things. They weren't involved like that. I think for, for girls that wasn't as bad, but for gay men, if you were, you know, a little more feminine, you would get bullied, for sure. I mean, I dated a couple of girls <laughs> when I was in my senior year of high school and um, people kind of knew about it, but n nobody really said anything, at least not to my face. Oh my God, and there's no sex ed. Absolutely no sex ed, no free condoms or anything like that. At least, uh, I'm, I'm gonna stop saying that, right? That it's my experience, you got it. But I have never been to a sex ed class in my life. Teachers would never talk to us about anything sexual. And the closest thing to sex ed was biology class when you know we learned how babies are made. <laughs> but it wasn't about us personally and how to have safe sex, how to protect ourselves or consent. <laughs> Definitely nothing about consent. But yeah, we just didn't have sex ed or free condoms or anything like that at all. Okay, that's a very interesting question. What was the grading scale like? That's another thing that is completely different. So you, you don't get A's and B's and C's, you get numbers from 0 to 10. So you take a test and if you got everything wrong, it's 0. If you get 100% of everything right, it's 10. <laughs> And usually you need a five to pass. So if you get 50% of your test right, you pass. If you don't pass, then there are a few things you can do to try to recover your grade. Oh my God, and an interesting thing, because I know that in some other places it doesn't work like this, you usually have to pass every single class for you to be able to move on to the next year. So if you had wonderful grades, but you didn't pass geography, <laughs> You can't just go to the next year and retake just geography. You have to retake the whole year. <laughs> Thankfully, that never happened to me. I never had to retake a year. That would have been traumatizing, but a lot of people have to do that. And then you basically lose a whole year of your life and you have to retake everything. Oh my God, thank God it never happened to me. And oh my God, everybody's always in fear of that because that means everybody who you knew, who had been studying with you for years, you know, that class, there's always the same class, everybody moves on to the next year and you stay behind and you have to meet a whole other crowd of people who are younger than you, and then everybody thinks you're kind of dumb. Traumatizing. Oh, another thing that is different relating to grades is that when you're applying to go to university here in Brazil, they don't look at your school grades at all. Usually the way it works is you apply and uh, each uni has the long, long test that you need to take that is like a four hour test. So let's say they have 50 spots for a course, they would take the 50 best grades at this specific test for the university. And I think that's good and bad at the same time. On one hand, I think it's good because when you're a kid, you're not really worried about university that much. You make mistakes, you're so young. So it's a shame to have those school grades that you can't change be the thing that will determine your life. But 
The bad part of it is that you could have been a wonderful student, your grades could have been perfect, you might have been great at school, but if you get nervous and you mess it up during this test, that's it. You gotta wait until next year. <laughs> oh, this is something that a lot of people have been asking as well. Did you have to wear uniforms? Now, that varies a lot from school to school. I think in private schools, you always have to wear uniforms, but in public schools, some of them make you wear a uniform and uh, some of them don't. Only one of my high schools didn't make me wear a uniform. They had like a school t-shirt that you could buy and wear if you wanted to, but nobody did. But uniforms are definitely, definitely very, very popular here in Brazil. However, the uniforms are completely different from, for example, UK uniforms. Oh my God, every time I see kids in the UK going to school, they're so adorable. It looks like they're going to Hogwarts, so cute. It wasn't like that in Brazil. We didn't have like pleated skirts and uh, little ties and uh, cute little formal shoes. No, it was nothing like that. It was like way, way, way more informal because fashion in general here in Brazil and everything is way more informal. So it was more like a gym class uniform type of thing. So you would wear a t-shirt and a tracksuit or a t-shirt and uh, shorts and you would wear sneakers and you would have like a light summer coat as well because it never gets really cold here and at least the schools I've been to they weren't very strict about whether you can wear makeup or not it was fine as long as you didn't have anything too crazy on nobody would say anything to you I very often had some very crazy things on so <laughs> so they would say things to me but I think for the most part people were okay. Oh my god, there was this one time I bought these sneakers that had high heels on. They were so ugly, but I really wanted to wear heels to school, but we could only wear sneakers. And then I got in trouble for it because the principal saw me and she told me off. And oh my god, I oh, just remember that part. Oh, it was so sexist. She said to me, oh, you can't wear this because you're gonna distract the boys. You know, because my education isn't important, you know, God forbid my high heels distract the boys. And when I went to the school that didn't make you wear uniforms, I tried to be more fashionable and pink and glamorous, kind of like Mean Girls. I mean, keep in mind I was going to high school in the 2000s, right? So I would watch that kind of stuff from America and I would want to like live that life and wear that stuff to school here. It, people did not like it <laughs> because everybody was very very informal even when you could wear whatever you wanted everybody would wear jeans and a t-shirt and that would be it and they thought it was crazy as f <laughs> I really hope this is a bit different now but when I was going to school anything that was slightly different fashion wise would make people be kind of mean to you even like very silly things like I enjoyed painting my nails neon colors and like yellow bright green things like that when I was in high school and uh, people would make fun of me for that I mean how silly is that ow ow <laughs> Is English mandatory at Brazilian schools? Yes, <laughs> but it's not the same English that people learn in the US or the UK, obviously. It's English as a second language. So I had English classes all my life in school because it was mandatory and when I moved to the UK I couldn't understand anything. You know, it's like when people have French classes in school and they think they know a lot of French but when they actually go to France and they speak to a French person they don't understand anything. It's kind of like that. <laughs> oh, that's a very interesting question. Did you have any country specific subjects like relative to Brazilian culture? We didn't have like one specific thing. But in history class, for example, in addition to learning world history, we would learn Brazilian history as well. Oh, and in gym class, we would play like sports that are popular in Brazil, like soccer, volleyball, things like that. And yeah, there's no American football or baseball. We would, yeah, we didn't do that at all in school. <laughs> oh, and we have no cheerleaders as well. <laughs>
Let me look at my notes because I'm sure there are more things that were different that I forgot to mention. Oh yeah, we don't have prom. <laughs> yeah, prom is not a thing, <laughs> which I was always so sad about because I would watch American movies and I would wish there was prom because I would have worn some fabulous dresses and it would have been so cool, but no, we didn't have prom. Most schools get a graduation party when you finish high school. <laughs> the school I went to on my senior year was a very, very, very rough school. I mean, we didn't have computers, like no toilet seats, rough. <laughs> it was rough. <laughs> the people were so nice though, but yeah. So I think the school didn't have funds for a graduation party and then we kind of tried to organize something on our own but it didn't work out because we were 17 year olds. <laughs> so I never had a graduation party for high school. Oh my god, but there's one thing that is really fun and a lot of schools do and we did do that in my senior year which is we all organize ourselves and we all show up to school wearing crazy stuff. So there was one day when we all showed up in pajamas. <laughs> There was another day where we all had to wear things that didn't match, so like some really crazy, awful clothes. There were a lot of little things like that that we organized ourselves, and that was cute and fun. Oh, good times, good times. I miss going to school. Okay, so I think I've covered the bases. If you have any more questions, and if you want me to make a part two, just leave your questions in the comments. So yeah, that's gonna be it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and have a very, very lovely day. Mwah.